Hello everybody and welcome back to the road to KSP2. Today we're starting out with the Nyx Crossbar. And yeah, and it's launching on a CDSM5. The Nyx Crossbar is going to be an adapter, uh, like basically just a cross adapter for the Nyx space station, which is around the Mun. It's slightly based off of the Deep Space Gateway, which will be built in a couple of years, uh, along with the Artemis missions. And yeah, it's uh, its main purpose is just to allow more uh, like more modules to be attached. Um, we're gonna attach a hab to one of them. We're gonna attach a actually, I think what we're gonna do is attach two habs, and then like a science bay, and then we're gonna have the docking adapter, so we can actually start sending Kerbals up there. It's going to be a uh, a good mission overall. Uh, so yeah, here we are. We're deorbiting the first stage of the CDSM-5. Uh, I don't know what's been going on with these rockets recently. I haven't landed one, like, correctly in several episodes. Uh, I'm doing everything the same way I used to. I don't... I don't know what exactly has been going on. Uh, they just have not been igniting with the, the KSP land landing or whatever. And I wonder if it has to do something with the others. I like I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, these are always incredibly helpful. Maybe even ring the the bell if you want to get updates about the channel. And yeah, uh, we're even doing a little thing right now that is uh, called Rocket Clash. Uh, we're basically voting to see. What's the ba what's the absolute favorite rocket? It's in my community page. I'm posting it almost every day. Yeah, you should really check that out. Anyway, uh, here's the second stage. It's also reusable. And yeah, uh, we are launch. Uh, well, the upper stage of the Nyx crossbar will get out to Jewel. We're doing the same thing that we did in the last episode where we use the lower stage to like actually shoot us out there and then we'll deorbit the lower stage back into the uh back into the surface of Kerbin. Uh yeah. It's uh it's actually pretty pretty useful. And I found out we have enough delta V to really turn ourselves like all the way there. Yeah, there we go. And here we are coming in at a great great speed. Uh, which is slightly a problem as you'll see in just a moment we lose our engine and two of our landing legs but that's okay because that was only the most expensive part of the ship yeah and then it blows up on the bottom yeah so here's the next crossbar it's finally making its way to uh, to its final destination around the bun gonna take several days to get out there or actually several hours it only takes like I think it takes one herbal day to get to the one but anyway here we are we're uh, lowering well we're circularizing not really circular but yeah then I turned on rendezvous out of pilot and so now we're getting our our uh, inclination corrected and now we are lowering while well, we're like circularizing our our uh, orbit around the mun so we can actually get a better uh periaps so here we are we're about to do i believe it's called a home and transfer we're about to do our home and transfer i disconnected at the last second just so that that piece would fly away and maybe one day crash into the surface of kerbin I think we just watched it do that a second ago. Um, anyway, the very useful amount of RCS on it uh, actually helps us close the gap. And I am sorry, I am uh, I'm sick again. Uh, you can thank my girlfriend for that. She got sick. She's a tutor. So, uh, yeah, the little kids got her sick. Then they got me sick. Anyway, here we are. We are uh, quickly approaching the thing. We we're actually on a, yeah, we're we were on a uh, like 
we weren't orbit we weren't orbital velocity that's how close we are to uh orbital velocity on this space station that's actually really good for us because that means our landers that we use from here they don't they don't need to be you know like uh exactly super fuel like they don't need to have a lot of fuel so if we have one craft with a lot of fuel on it we can repeatedly launch it to the station multiple times before needing to ever have anything sent out here to refuel it anyway yeah this is the engine of the kss carthage it's cheated up here uh, i had to cheat it into orbit uh because the kraken kept attacking it off the launch pad i probably launched it maybe 10 times it take it took like 10 minutes to load in each time and it would just explode every time like literally as soon as it was off the launch pad at around 400 meters it would just explode just the entire thing would just explode um then i realized if i just cheated it into orbit it wouldn't explode so i cheated it into orbit without its you know ascent module and yeah it's fine the ascent module was over like 600 parts or something like that it was horribly laggy it took forever to load in i was just done with it it had more than enough delta v to get into space at around 4,000 in total you only really need 3,000 to get into orbit so i just you know cheated it in i was basically fed up it should have been getting to orbit it was just exploding anyway yeah here we are we are uh doing very slow burns this thing has a very low thrust to thrust to weight ratio because those uh those decoupable side tanks are so heavy um but in total it'll get about a thousand tons of fuel i believe to jewel i could be wrong about that but i believe my math is correct should get a thousand tons of fuel to jewel which is what we need it for we need to rescue our main group of kerbals from jewel they're all stuck on the surface of lathe uh this will that's what this whole mission's been about that's what the whole kss Car carthage mission is for just saving those poor kerbals stuck on jewel yeah, we had to orbit a couple of times uh, to get our rendezvous because, uh, well, it'll, it'll just take forever. Uh, here we are. We're slowly slowing ourselves down. Slow as it could ever be. So, uh, yeah, this, this mission, it's, uh, th this engine in particular is, uh, it's really only ever going to be used once, like, officially, uh, to get from Kerbin to Jewel. I may use the whole ship for a fuel tug between, like, Jewel, Sardis, and, uh, Nyaidon, Nyaidon, stuff like that. I may use use it for that because we the people have voted we are taking a team of kerbals to every planet in the solar system on the final episode so we have to start setting up the infrastructure for that yeah but here we are we're slowing down we overshoot it a little bit uh which you know it's not great but you know it's fine we had to transfer over because there's no way in hell this thing is ever docking to the other one. Uh, and this is where I learned that this craft is horribly unbalanced when it comes to its RCS. This thing can't dock to save its life. <sighs> it is quite the, uh, the problem. But it's not like too much of a problem like... If I put on docking, uh, like the docking autopilot, it gets it really well, but it uses so much RCS fuel. I actually have to send another craft up here to refuel all the RCS because this thing just constantly burns the RCS the whole time, which is just an absolute pain. I uh, would not recommend it. Uh, <laughs> make sure to balance out your RCS, but this is like three separate modules, so like 
I guess it makes sense that it's a little bit wonky. And it's it's center of mass is not in the center of it, so yeah. Yeah, it makes sense why it would be a pain to, you know, uh, maneuver. Uh, so that means I have to send two more things up here. A uh, Well, actually, three more things. I need a uh, communications disc, because uh, after a certain point, this thing just can't communicate with Kermit anymore. Uh, it's just a probe. There's going to be no Kerbals on this one, because we're rescuing Kerbals with it. Uh, so, yeah, it's just sending out the main uh, lander and that'll that'll be it. The lander that'll pick up the stranded Kerbals that'll never get back home. <laughs> I feel so bad. But, uh, yeah. So the, the last episode will be a great Grand Tour episode. And we'll see how much science that unlocks because gonna unlock a ridiculous amount of science especially since i'm planning on putting a uh, science lab on board thinking about putting two science labs on board because there's just so much that needs to be done during that time i'm gonna send just a shit ton of carnivals to wherever it's gonna be insane uh yeah this was definitely the longest part of the episode but i mean it's the most important part of the episode Specifically because, I mean, we want those Kerbals that are out there. Nothing to do without them. I mean, there is stuff to do without them. We've been doing stuff without them. But, I mean, it's Val and, I think, Bob. Because Jab and Bill are dead. Yeah. Alright, so we're finally making it, like, close to the point where we're actually docking to this thing. And... You'll notice we keep overshooting it. I don't know the reason why, and I think it's partially because of the just unwieldy nature of the upper stage of this thing. But it was just a pain. This rocket is a pain. Uh, but yeah, here we come in. We overshoot it again. We, and now we have to go against the current. And so I, now I'm, I decided that I'll do the Matt Lound patented lazy docking method just by pointing them both at it just firing which I mean math loud knows this shit like he, he knows it and uh, yeah he the lazy method is like easily one of the best methods for docking you just point both nodes at each other both target nodes at each other and he, yeah so here's the communications disk the KSS Carthage also being launched on a CDSM5 uh, I don't know why I clicked that yeah here it is it's going to orbit I decided that uh, yeah well since it's super lightweight I mean why not just expend the first stage because I mean they're not landing anymore uh, and I mean later we could try and land it if we figure out what's wrong but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not like we're going to actually ever figure out what's wrong. So I guess we might as well try. Yeah, it, I mean, it's already in orbit. So I, I turned on the rendezvous autopilot. So yeah, now it's doing its, uh, it's inclination burn. It's only about, uh, I believe it says 14 meters per second. Not a huge deal. And, uh, yeah. So, here we go. We're, uh, we just did our, uh, I think it's, uh, I think that raised our periapsis or something. I don't know what that burn did. But I think that was our, uh, yeah, that burn right there was our, like, encounter burn. No, that just raised our periapsis. Okay. And our apoapsis. It just raised our whole orbit. Yeah, now we're uh, going to lower our orbit so that we can transfer directly to the craft and everything will be fine. Here we are, we're coming in range of the craft. That's why it's stopping the game entirely. Uh, the, the craft is just so large and so laggy. 
I'm so afraid for when we get both crafts next to each other. I feel like it'll just break my game. Yeah, here they are, right next to each other. Uh, I decided to use this time to uh, just get get over there, just dock it. Here we go. And yeah. So the this docking, it's not exceptionally hard. It's a large craft, so one craft is just not moving at all. And the uh, smaller craft is super easy to maneuver. Took almost no time at all. And here we are coming in real close to put the uh, dishes on the uh, on the nose of this thing. And yeah, this will uh, this will pretty much be the end of the episode. I mean, we do have to deorbit the second stage. We are new orbiting the second stage of this episode. Um, yeah, we'll go over there and do that right now. As you can tell, Jesus, it takes so much to just transfer vessels. Uh, yeah, so we're actually going to turn this craft around. Uh, it's right up here. It has more than enough fluid or fuel. I mean, why not try and turn it around? Uh, yeah, so... Here we go. And then I decided that we're probably just not going to be able to turn it around. So, I mean, we might as well just take it in. Just go in kind of slow. And, uh, yeah. Just land right there in the center of the landmass. And, uh, basically just enjoy ourselves for the rest of this, uh, episode. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys for coming in, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.